Hi. Now what we have here is an example based on transformations of matrices. And if you would like to have a go at it, just give you some time to read it through. Do pause the video, come back when ready, and I'll take you through the work solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So uh, let's see what we got. First of all, we're told the transformation U represented by the 2x2 two two matrix P is a rotation through 90 degrees anticlockwise about the origin. And what we've got to do is write down that matrix P. Now, there's plenty of tutorials on my website on this, but I'll just quickly run through uh, how we form the uh, transformation matrix. Essentially, all we've got to do is just consider what we call the unit base vectors. First one we consider is the vector 1, 0, which goes in this direction. And we'll just mark it in as 1, 0. And it's in the direction of the x-axis. And we see where this goes under a rotation through 90 degrees. It's going to rotate 90 degrees round here and it's going to go on to this vector here. This vector being 0, 1. And uh, we now look at the other base vector, unit base vector, which is the unit base vector 0, 1. You'll see this one then in this position here, up here. Okay, so 0, 1. Where does this go to if we rotate it 90 degrees about the origin? Well, it turns round and goes to this position here. And this will be the vector minus 1, 0. We use these two vectors then to give us our matrix P. So P is going to equal the matrix. You write down the first one, 0, 1 and then you write down where this one went to, minus 1, 0. That is your matrix. Now we do a similar method for this next question. We're told that the transformation V represented by the 2 by 2 matrix Q is a reflection in the line Y equals minus X. And again, we've got to write down the matrix Q. So to do something like this, again, we're just going to set up our axes and we're going to look at where those two unit base vectors go to under this transformation V. So starting then with our first unit base vector, 1, 0, where's this going to go when we reflect it in the line y equals minus x? Well, the line y equals minus x is this diagonal through the origin like that. So I can expect 1, 0 to reflect across this line down to this position here. This position is the vector 0, minus 1. Again, we now look at the other unit base vector, this one up here, 0, 1. And if we draw in that diagonal, y equals minus x, then this vector is going to get reflected over here into this position. And that is the vector minus 1, 0. So that's telling us that therefore Q is going to be the matrix 0, minus 1, and then minus 1, 0. All right. Now you should be able to do these obviously without necessarily drawing these diagrams. You should be able to see these in your mind, I would suspect. But uh, there you go, just a breakdown of how we get those. Okay, now in the next part, we're given that U followed by V is a transformation T, which is represented by the matrix R. And we've got to express R in terms of P and Q. Well, We've got to be very careful with this type of question because we've got R is equal to. Now, it is U that is followed by V. So we're going to do U first of all on a shape. 
So that is given by the matrix P, but it is then followed by this transformation V, which is represented by the matrix Q. It's very tempting to put PQ, but it's actually QP, because if we had the matrix that represented a shape written here, we would do P on the shape first of all, and then we would get an answer and then do Q on that resulting shape. So I hope that makes sense. So essentially R equals Q times P. Now we've got to go on and find the matrix R. So clearly we just got to carry out this matrix multiplication. So therefore what we've got is R is going to equal the matrix Q which is 0, minus 1, minus 1, 0. And we multiply it with the matrix P, which is, as you can see up here, 0, minus 1, 1, 0. So in the usual way, when we do matrix multiplication, we just do rows by columns. So we're going to have 0 times 0 is 0, plus minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1. And then you're going to do top row again, multiplied by this column. 0 times minus 1 is 0. Minus 1 times 0 is 0. Add those two together and you've still got 0. Bottom row, first column, minus 1 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Add those two together and you've got 0. And then bottom row, end column, minus 1 times minus 1 is 1, plus 0 times 0 is 0. So you're just going to be left with 1. There's your answer. OK. Now, in part E, it says give a full description of T as a single transformation. Well, to describe that, what I'm going to do is essentially go back to looking at what happens to my two unit base vectors under this transformation. Our first unit base vector 1, 0 has gone to minus 1, 0, which will be over to here, into that position. Now that could be one of two things. It could be a reflection in the y-axis or it could be a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. What we need to know though is the same transformation has got to be consistent with this second unit base vector. We're looking at the unit vector 0, 1. OK, 0, 1. Where does this go to? Well, we're told it goes to 0, 1. It stays put. So therefore, the transformation that's consistent with both these diagrams has to be a reflection in the y-axis. So there's our answer. For T, T represents essentially a reflection in the y-axis. Alright?